guys remember the last video, which I just finished recording today, actually. Um, I finished off my pen set. You guys seen how I made the pen set and everything else. And we had some activity in there with rabbits. And I was going to go put the snares in in the next couple days. I was going to keep baiting them and get some more rabbits in the area. However, I checked the weather and uh, it's not looking good. There, we got 40 to 60, 40 to sexy, 40 to 60 centimeters of snow coming in between tomorrow morning and, and the next day. So this is my Hail Mary tonight. I'm going to put down the snares tonight. I'm hoping the cloud cover coming in for the storm is going to block out the moon because it's supposed to be pretty bright tonight and that'll get the uh, the rabbits pretty active and we'll be able to get one uh, before the, the snow kind of ruins the set and I'll have to raise it up out of the snow and everything. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to get started on this video. Um, I'll show you guys my setup and kind of how I like to set up the, uh, the snares, uh, especially for scent control and stuff like that. A lot of people don't really consider that, but you will increase your odds of catching rabbits if you uh, control your scent a little bit, or at least mask it. I'll show you that. But anyways, we'll get, along, get on with the video and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the woods. This is how I like to do it. Just different ways, but I think this is probably one of the more common ways of masking scent on rabbit snares. Find yourself a pine or spruce or something that's got a real or aromatic smell to it. Just trying to get that out of the way. And what I like to do is cut a little bit into the cadmium or the, the deep layer of the bark. You get that strong smell that they give off. So, so now you see how it's got this little flap. And uh, I'll take the rabbit snare, I'll unravel it. I've already got my eyelet and everything put in there. Then I'll just kind of get it in under there and then while it's inside that like slit I'll work it on the tree like this and that'll get this thing smelling just like like uh, well whatever tree you're using on spruce like that it gets all the kinks out of your your wire then you can set it up and I like to pull it tight by keeping the bend radius without, you know, bending it too much so it starts to kink or something. And I'll wrap that around. And then that kind of will spring the snare as well. Once you set it up, they go through and it'll kind of shut around their head, around their neck. What I'm going to do is, you guys heard me talk about my good friend NL Ghost Wolf. Um... His channel, he's got some really good videos. I can't teach you anything here that he's not going to teach you over there in better detail. So head over to NL Ghost Wolf. Check out how he does uh, his snares and, uh, yeah, up your game a little bit because that guy knows what he's doing for sure. So now I'll just finish that for each of the snares that I made at home. The outdoors, in the way I know it, was kind of introduced to me by my dad through rabbit snaring. My dad worked a lot when I was young and uh, to provide for his family. He was gone an awful lot. Um, not his choice, obviously, but that's what you got to do as a man. And uh, he did it quite well. But when he got home, he did spend as much time as possible doing these type of things with me. And most of my fond memories in the woods growing up uh, is rabbit catching with my dad and uh, I think I've told the story before where we had a rabbit broke free of its snare 
and uh, or the snare broke free of the tree we had our dog with us and the dog was quite capable of running after that rabbit and catching it for some reason my dad decided to give me the dog told me to stay put and he ran through the woods and he came back with that rabbit <laughs> in his hands it was still alive and uh he gave me the the choice of um letting it go or whatever and as a child i looked and realized well it's wounded it's bleeding quite profusely through the neck and the reason we were out there was to get food so i made the decision of putting the rabbit down and he executed it and i became a man i know killing animals don't make you a man that's not what i'm getting at in case someone stumbles upon this and somehow is offended if you are you're in the wrong spot but anyways um it's the fact that I made a mature decision at a young age to not let an animal go that was going to probably die anyways and to put it to good use. That's where I'm getting at with that. So, no hate in the comments. Please. So here we are at the first opening. And all I'm going to do here is the stick that I put there for them to chew on. I'm going to get rid of that. Throw that in there. Because I don't want them at this point... Um, slowing down. I want him to get to his point and whoop, jump in, get the get the snare around the neck, and get a nice clean ethical kill. And I run the wire through the eyelet, so I have my snare. So now, this you want the snare about that big. And as you'll see, if you do go check out NL Ghost Wolf's material, you'll see that. He makes his a little oval, which is perfectly fine. Now, mine might be a little too big there, so I'm just going to adjust it. And the reason for that is uh, when rabbits jump, they actually pin their ears back. Their ears, they're not jumping with their ears up high, so you don't have to worry about their ears hitting the top. What you're worried about is the whiskers on the sides. So when they jump through, if they if they go to go to go through and their head is not fully through and they're not committed and they touch their whiskers on that they're going to back up and they're going to reassess so you want to have it a little more oval and then i'm going to tighten this i don't know if you guys can see i'm going to tighten that bend radius down which creates a bit of a spring effect and then like pull it up like that so that when the rabbit goes through this should spring down a little more. I'm going to make a adjust it a little more. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to this stick that I previously put here. That is going to go around there. Just one one loop. And that will be my my brace for that. And then I can make adjustments as needed right here for height. And but it's going to be tied off on the top of there. That's the snare, rabbit comes in, that's a chin up stick, that's just to uh, make sure that the head goes through and then they commit through it, because if not, if that's, you know, I'm a, I'm a good height there from the ground, just slightly over, just slightly over my uh, width of my hand, got the chin up stick, that'll keep their head up from going under, and their head should go there, they'll commit, jump through, and it pulls tight. All right, I'll take you around now and show you all the uh, snares, and, and then uh, we'll get out of here. Whoa, I almost dropped you. So there's a snare right there. You can see it. 
If you can't, that's a good thing. At least make it hard to see. So chin up stick, snare. I got this here just to kind of camouflage a little bit of the the edge of the wire in. And uh yeah, that should be a decent set up there. Over this side, I got another one. That one is a little wider than uh than the other one, but still should be fine because it's tapered off because of the well, a little too wide is not too bad. You don't want them too tall because you don't want the rabbit to jump all the way through and get hooked around the belly. It's not a not a good way to, to kill a rabbit. So there's um, the third one. And uh, the last opening, which is the one they used to come and go last time. So, and that's it right there. So, decent setup. That's fresh poop right there from last night or early this morning. One right there. You can see the, the color difference. So. And then I got some fresh birch tips put in there. Just entice them to, to commit through the snare. So I guess next time I see you guys, we'll be out here checking this and uh, tomorrow morning. So see you then. We are finally getting some snow, and today I got my helper with me. I got Zach here, and uh, we're gonna go in check see if we got a rabbit. Hopefully we do, because we're gonna have to pull the uh, snares, because we're getting a lot of snow, anywhere from 40 to 60 centimeters. I think I already said that because I said 60 instead of 60. Anyways. Um, yeah. How you doing back there? Good. Good? Carrying my truck. Is not too heavy? No. No, you're a big strong man. You think we got anything back? No. Oh. I think we did get one. What do you think? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we got one. Late last night, he's pretty stiff, so we'll check the other sides. Oh. Alright, first things first. Let's um let's pull these snares. I'm not gonna take the wires out right now. I'm just gonna pull these shut and get them out of the way so it doesn't hook anything. Because we're probably gonna use this pen set again. What do you think? Yeah. <clears throat> he used a different opening this time, Zach. Last time, that rabbit, uh, can we only use this one here? That was a perfect snare, bud. Look, right around the neck. Real, real, real good. And he didn't struggle much at all. So, we'll just get this off. Oh, no entanglement, nothing. Sometimes I like to, uh, when I, well, I don't like to, but sometimes when I, if I just had the uh, snare hanging down, lots of times it'll give them time to run and they'll usually jump kind of back over and they'll, they'll twist themselves up. But I find putting a stake next to it and tying off from the stake, like he didn't even pull this little stake out and that's not in there very hard at all. So that shows that it was, it was on real good, right? Yeah. Real good, so, yeah. It's a nice little snowshoe here. Carry them like that. My dad told me one time, when we were growing up, carry them like that, and I never asked why, and I found out why. Why? Because I put it over my shoulder, because I was, I was very short, and they were hitting the ground when I was walking, so I threw them over my shoulder, and all the poop came out all over me. <laughs> After that, I always carried them by the back legs. Show us the rabbit. That's a nice snowshoe hair, isn't it? Yeah. People are probably getting annoyed with me for calling it a rabbit and everything else, but yeah. You feel the fur? No. 
Feel the burnt. Take the glove off. You're not going to feel the glove on. It's soft. Soft. Very soft. We'll keep the fur too. We'll make something for mom for that. We got ourselves a rabbit. We're going to do a catch clean cook, but it won't be today. Uh, it's my daughter's birthday, so we're going to get back to the house and we're going to celebrate her birthday with her. And uh, uh, this will be maybe maybe tomorrow. I did put the trail cam out just next to the, the, the pen set on the ground level. I'm not sure why I didn't record anything the night before, but this time I actually got some footage. So we'll check that out. tomorrow got the hair we're gonna do the catch clean cook here but i just gotta find a nice spot to sit down and make a fire and and set up here so we gotta get some firewood some kindling stuff like that so This is the perfect little spot right here. I like this. Lots of dry tinder. Nice spot to sit down. Yeah. This'll do. This'll do, donkey. This'll do. Nice place to sit down, and right there will be perfect for the fire. And uh, most of this will probably snap right up. Oh, yeah. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. I'm going to put the fire right here. But I want to get away, get some of the snow out of the way first. There she goes. That's when you put your twigs on and your birch. And then the wind picks up because the odds are against you. Fires in the winter never take off the same because the wood is holding a bit of moisture, so it's almost like it's got to dry out. But this is this will go. This is not a bad bad fire here. I mean, it could have been better if I had more birch, but I'm just lifting it up a little bit, let some air underneath. There you go. So while all that's drying out and, and burning off, turning into coals, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this guy.
once I get a fire going, I always like to kind of put sticks in the dry sticks upwards, just so it gives the flame something to climb, and it burns hotter and faster. Because now I'm just trying to produce coals. How you structure your fire is, has a has a huge amount on how uh, how fast it burns and how hot it burns. I just quartered the rabbit up, mostly because um, I'm going to take the body back and probably make stew out of it. I'm not, I don't, I'm not in the mood to eat a whole rabbit anyway, so I just quartered it up. It's the easiest way of going about it. Just trying to get all this extra fur off it. If anybody has caught snowshoe hair, they know that the fur kind of goes everywhere. So most of it's going to get burnt off because I'm doing this pretty primitive style. <laughs> There you go. Beautiful fur. Rabbits have really nice fur. Very underrated, just because it's a weak fur and they tend to pull out easy and stuff like that, but man, what a nice fur for lying inside of a glove or something like that. Like just having it like that, your hand, hand just warms right up. And it makes sense, I mean, these things survive the winter with this. They have no fat. They don't use fat to retain heat like we do. They have a quick metabolism. They burn a lot of energy and uh, produce a lot of heat that way. Oh, I got smoke in the eyes. Uh, smoke line but this here so it keeps them warm all winter long beautiful fur no fancy cooking equipment just primitive on the fire I just need to find some green green wood here now so I can lay the, uh, the food across it to cook it so that's all I'm doing Woodpecker. One of these days I'm going to get a camera that can zoom in real good because uh, that's the kind of stuff I want to show you. I want to be able to zoom in, take some footage of like a woodpecker smacking his head on a tree. That's good. right in the flame. The wife's always telling me when I'm cooking, I'm using too much heat. She's probably right, but it's still food. I'll eat it anyway. Get yourself a pair of gloves, a pair of nice welding gloves even like this for dealing with stuff at the fire so you don't have to burn yourself up. Trapping gloves. Anybody out there trapping knows what I'm talking about when they talk about these gloves. You don't want to uh, buy those cheap gloves that as soon as a little spark touches it, it melts away. Get yourself a good leather pair of gloves like this. Even just to have in your kit or 
just to keep your hands warm or whatever it is. Much better gloves. Because I can deal with the fire a little bit here. I can pick up hot coals, throw them back in, move stuff around. Don't have to worry too much about it for a short amount of times, right? I got no Tetley or Red Rose with me today, but I got some herbal tea, which is fine. That's good once in a while. neglect to do it when I have to <laughs> I use it last. good water. Gonna lay that right in the snowbank and uh, let it cool down. Perfect. If you've never eaten over a fire like that, I encourage you to. The char, <laughs> I know it looks way overcooked, and it, it probably is, but with rabbit you have to cook it well, because they can carry disease. But the crispy char on the outside with the smoke and everything, You can stew it, you can do what you want, but you're not going to get a better taste in rabbit than this. Or hair. This one's perfect. It's real nice and juicy on the inside. I don't know if you can see that. It's perfect. Life's good. This is where I get my slogan, live peacefully wild. This moment like this. Eating an animal that I caught myself 
over an open fire that I created myself with a nice warm pot of tea <laughs> that somebody else collected the leaves for. But I could have done it myself. Well, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little uh, another catch clean cook with me. We'll have more of this for sure in the future. But uh, I appreciate you guys following along once again, as always. And I'll see you on the next one. Fish. Thank you.